Like many people nowadays, I've been toying with the idea of raising chickens. Wouldn't it be great to walk outside in the morning and gather truly fresh eggs for an omelet? But then I spotted a sign outside my neighbor's house. Eggs, $2.50. Lucky for me, neighbor Lisa Osler is now raising enough chickens to sell a few dozen eggs each week. And she's willing to share tips for novice egg producers. Lisa and her husband Chris have both retired from being air traffic controllers in the Marines. They've been raising their three children in Michigan, now on 10 acres outside Lansing. Here's how she got started four years ago. I don't know, I just got interested in it. And I didn't start out to sell eggs. I didn't. I just, I kind of started out because I was interested in them. And then I used to let them just completely free range. The first batch I had, we had, I let my kids pick out 11, but then a dog killed half of them. So now they're in the electric fence part. Um, but then, my fa since my family doesn't live here, even giving them away to the neighbors and stuff, I, it just, it's like, well, maybe I should sell them and break even, <laughs> you know? Now, I would say to the people who want to have chickens, like, let's, I would say three it would be good. And you can use a doghouse. I mean, just a doghouse. But you have to make sure, I would say, that a raccoon could not get in it at night, you know. Because, well, we've had a dog, we've had fire, we've had um, a possum, owls, hawks. <laughs> I mean, uh, the, the most difficulty we had was with the owl. And that was because an owl will tear off the netting and owls are patient and smart. We had, there's a great big horned owl back out there. But we didn't know what was, until it left a feather, we didn't know what we were up against, kind of. But anyway, for the, if, you're, I mean, I, if you're talking to people who have just a backyard, you could, you know, those chicken tractors, have you read about those? Yeah, and you could move them? Yeah, you just move them every day. And you could even, if your yard is fenced in, in the daytime, you could let them out, you know. But, um, yeah, a doghouse that, that you could lock up that a rac I would say a raccoon would be your biggest, or a possum. Those things are nasty, too. But If you order chickens through the mail, you have to order 25 at a minimum. And, but in spring, all the feed stores will sell chickens. So if you just want two or three or... You know, and I've gotten a set from um, Mount Healthy in o Ohio. They were here within a day, within a day. And then Sand Hill Preservation, they usually put in two or three extra chickens, not that I've had any die, and um, they always call and ask, you know. So they ship them in a box with holes and mm -hmm. everything? And, and you just pick them up at the post office. They send them the day they're born because the yolk sac lasts for three days for their food. If you were saying to somebody, I mean, say you've got a person living in an urban area, they've just changed the law, they I could see. get a doghouse and put it in the backyard mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. three, start with three chickens. Mm -hmm. But what happens when it gets cold? How, well, I mean, then you just um, you would just hang a light bulb in there. That's all that they used to have is a light bulb, and um, that gives enough heat. Mm -hmm. Oh, I mean, you, you put hay. Now our first chicken house did burn down. <laughs> That's another one of the wily. <laughs> so you have to be careful where that light bulb is. Well, mm -hmm. yeah, and um, yeah. Well, they had a habit of. It didn't matter what we did, they would knock it down. You know, we'd never got it secure enough. Now, now we do, because you learn your lesson, hopefully. <laughs> but no, I don't think chickens are that hard. I really don't. And but they are dirty. They are, they are poopers from hell. They, they're they're social, so I would say not to get one. They are social, and um, and they are um, like it, people say. Well, they're vegetarian. Well. I have seen chickens eat frogs, um, snakes, well, um, each other. Oh yes, 
Like if you like, I once at one accidentally got tangled up in the net. They killed it. They killed it and ate it. I mean, they're brutal, brutal, brutal. Um, but I think Purina is the one we've liked the best. It's worked well for them. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you know Mary Mulder, but she's the dog groomer. Yeah. And she, um, like, she, her husband can get eggs at w- work, but she likes ours better. And the only difference is the food. So, um. Because you do taste it in the egg, don't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I always wonder. <laughs> but they can't eat potatoes, like, um, because they can't digest them, especially if they're green. And that's the only thing you can't really feed a chicken. Um, they'll eat anything. So you have to have a frost-free hydrant to give them water in the winter, or do you just take water out to them? I take it out to them. That We have a pump in the backyard that um, is open all winter. Uh, so. so you've expanded to how many chickens now? Well, I do have, I ordered 25 just meat chickens, which are going to be leaving soon. Um, leaving, then, you're, you're sending them off to another Well, I'm sit- no, I'm going to have them butchered at, at, at Fowlerville. They cost $2 a piece. Just, but I, see, no, this is where my husband and I disagree. I would like to do them myself because that's $50. And I, I can spend money on books. I can spend money on plants. Um, but I, I resent spending $50 on that. But he feels like I have butchered, I've butchered lots of the chickens. I could not do a pig because they're smart and I'd have to send it away. But, um... How did you teach yourself to do that? That would be hard, I would think, oh, to butcher your first chicken. Well, I read the books. I read the books. And um, <laughs> actually, one of the books I read said that you put the chicken's neck underneath like a rake, and then you, you know what I mean, you pull up or whatever. <sighs> that didn't work. <laughs> In fact, it, it, lay, it was flopped in my arms, and I was going to put it someplace so that like a hawk or something could get it and then it, w- it woke up and ran away <laughs> so, <laughs> but it's I'm not going to say it's fun to kill something It's, but the longer I've done it the more it's you have to produce or you're taking away you know what I'm saying you can't you have to earn your keep kind of thing I mean I would have to say I've gotten more I guess like a farmer in that they're not like personal pet dogs or and what how did you decide which which type of chicken to have because there are so many and oh. they're so cool well um oh first we had they're called americanas the, there's aracanas and americanas and aracanas don't have tail feathers and americanas do but they're the they call them the easter egg chickens the ones that lay the green eggs and stuff mm. And um, that's, well, like I said, I just sent the kids to the store. And that's pretty much what they came back with. Um, they picked them out of the tub? Mm-hmm. But then Sand Hill um, Preservation Center has this sale that if they pick out, you know, it's like like $25 or something or for 25 chickens, but they pick them out. or But you can pick, like, heavies or... Heavies are the dual purpose. You can eat them or you can, um, you know, have them for egg layers. And then there's the light breeds that are more so for just eggs. And and they would send me a bunch of everything, like, you know, Egyptian Fayumis and Sumatras and Cochins with the feathery feet. And I think I've had about everything. Um... I have I'd say my favorite are the Americanas. Um, well, they're so they're so they're so calm comparatively speaking. And then you like I said the meaner chickens like um, the black sex lynx. Sex lynx are chickens that you can tell at birth or you know which sex they are like they're different colors. So you you um like I think it's a Rhode Island red with a Plymouth Rock or something, but anyway, that's the second. I think there's red sex links and black sex links. 
or whatever, but they're rowdy, <laughs> you know. And that, like every batch of chickens I've had, their personalities have all been different. I mean, really? I mean, yes. In fact, I'll even show you because we have the big tub and there's a little tub, and the big tub of chickens that my husband Chris picked out are they're a rowdy bunch, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So chickens have personality. Oh yeah, and and actually, I did read in a book that you can buy like a di diapers for chickens, and you can well, you know, if you think about it, you spend three hundred dollars on a cockatiel or something, or three dollars, two dollars on a chicken, and they do make good pets, some of them, and um, yeah. How do you then after you gather the eggs, mm -hmm. you have to wash them, size them, candle them? I um. Actually, the only ones I wash are the ones that are really muddy or dirty, but the other ones I just sand because there's a there's a protectant on them that that's there and it keeps them fresher longer. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. And um, you know they say eggs will last. I don't know. They consider an egg fresh for 28 days at least. But my sister. And she worries me, but I can I can visit her like months later, and she's like, hey, "Well, are these eggs still good? I've been using them." It's like, well, I guess, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I mean, months and months. I don't know, mm -hmm. but nobody's gotten. No, I, the only reason you would candle is if you were trying to um, hatch chickens, which I would like to do too, because that's to see if it's just fertilized or not. But um, a f you wouldn't really know the difference between a fertilized egg and a non-fertilized one because you, you pick them up every day. Oh, I see. Now, if... Um, and another thing, like in Europe, they leave their eggs out on the table. You know, they don't refrigerate them. They're not quite as fanatical as we are. But then again, maybe it's because they buy every day. and You know what I'm saying? They're not such a... Like, they don't go once every two weeks. What about the issue of salmonella and eggs? Because I don't remember that as a problem when I was growing up, but I hear it all the time now that you shouldn't, or you know, order eggs at a restaurant, um, you know, with runny yolks because. Oh, you know. well, see, now I don't order eggs out anyway, so. So you become a. Uh, mm, I no, yeah. They don't appeal to you, I bet. No, because they are different, and um, I, I like I said, I. I've only done it four years, but I have not had... I don't think you're going to get sick from your own eggs. You know, I don't think you're... For the people, you're just not going to. Well, I would say when they're little, to handle them a lot. Because they, they do become friendly. Well, now they say they're little dinosaurs, which I can believe. Uh -huh. uh, you know, you watch them run. I don't know. They're, they're all different. There's a deer back there now. But, um... Yeah. Now, what about roosters? It seems like all I see on these farm lists are people trying to offload the rooster because they oh. don't want them in the city because they can't have the rooster oh. in the city. Oh, because because they do crow. And, like, my neighbors don't care. Um, now, like, um, chickens scratch, but guineas, which lay eggs too, guinea hens, they don't scratch, so they don't hurt your garden. Like if you wanted one just to get bugs and not to dig, but they are noisy, and they um, like a butterfly flies by, and it's like let's raise the alarm. And I also had one one rooster that used to chase me. It really pissed me off. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I here I am keeping you alive, buddy. And <laughs> in fact, I did find a home for him, but I, he actually died in that fire. So, um, inadvertent fried chicken. Yeah. Wow. What do you do about cleaning? Because they are. Well, um. How often? What do you use? Well, once a year you're supposed to Clorox the whole thing and everything. I, um. I, well, I just kind of do it on, like, winter you have to do it more than summer because they're not in there very much in the summer. Um, I use straw. I um, I scrape everything down. Uh, sometimes I'll scrub everything down. Um, but you don't. I've never seen a bug in there. You know, so... Um, and if you read the books, it's like all these things with lice, and it's like... 
I looked at my chickens all the time, and there's they don't they don't have lice or anything. So I guess it'd be like I guess if you got your chicken from the wrong place, like a puppy mill kind of thing, you know, I suppose you could that um, I, you would kind of be importing those problems. But I, from where I've gotten them, now that tractor supply and stuff, they get theirs from Townline, Townline Hatchery. And I haven't had trouble with them either, so. But I guess if you get them from a reputable... Have you worried about avian flu? No. Mm -mm. I, I, you know, I guess my thing is this. <laughs> Why worry about something you really can't... Do you know what I mean? I mean, w how much safer could I make it? You know? Like, you're not supposed to... Um, like, it's bad to have... Like, the songbirds go in there or something, supposedly. Well, the songbirds go in there. You know? I mean... I mean, w how much, you know, control... I think... I would just say relax. <laughs> I'm <laughs> just